Hello there, my name's Karen Hollenbach. I'm the founding director of Think Bespoke and I'm a LinkedIn training specialist. Today, I'd like to talk to you about LinkedIn and to help you decide, is this the platform for you? Once we've made that decision together, I'll then give you some tips that I suggest you think about and implement to help you on your LinkedIn journey. And to finish, I'll give you some resources, some great downloads. Um, I'll show you how to access them from Think Bespoke's website that can get you started. And that's my LinkedIn profile checklist and my company page follower guide. So let's get started. Now, when we talk about LinkedIn, I'm just putting some, a slide up here for you to have a look at. When we talk about LinkedIn, I, um, when I run training with clients, one of the things that I like to say to people is if LinkedIn was a colleague, how would you describe them? And one of the funniest responses I had to this question was, well, you know, if I saw this colleague on the weekend and I was walking down the street, I'd probably cross the road. So I know LinkedIn is not everyone's first choice of platform. And let's be real, it's much more interesting to get on your phone. I'm just reaching over to my phone and have a look at what's happening at Instagram. I feel like Instagram is a magazine, a glossy magazine that I can find out all this, you know, really interesting stuff and be inspired and maybe even shop. However, with LinkedIn, it just doesn't feel as exciting. And so we've really got to decide first and foremost why would you spend time on LinkedIn? And if I show you my phone um, to make sure I do spend time on LinkedIn, I have it on the front page of my phone, whereas uh, I have Instagram and all the others hidden on the third page there. You can see my lovely family there too. So these are my boys a number of years ago. They're now uh, 16 and how old's the other one? 13. one of those lovely children may have just interrupted me as I was recording this, which is why I just paused. All right, so let's work out if LinkedIn's for you. Now, LinkedIn's like a virtual room. So in 2020, people were spending 50% more time on LinkedIn than they were the year before. And that's because of lockdown and restrictions. It's also because of the acceptance. This is a place where you can network with like-minded professionals. Now, if you have a business-to-business -business focus, which means you are servicing or working with other businesses, LinkedIn is definitely a platform for you. If you run a consultancy, an educational uh, practice, if you work in law, in finance, in accounting, and I'm also seeing a lot of people in the health and wellness space have a lot of success on LinkedIn, coaches, consultants, etc. If you are a consumer-based business and you're selling things, beautiful products, uh, beautiful experiences, platforms like Instagram may be more suitable for your business. However, LinkedIn is still a place where you can learn. So those first, that big sort of list I rattled off at first, it should definitely be your primary platform. If you're more servicing a consumer market with products, I'd say LinkedIn wouldn't be your primary platform. However, it's a great way to get intelligence about your competitors, about suppliers and about subject matter experts around the world. So you might use it more as a research tool, whereas those of you on those first descriptions that I uh, shared with you will be more active and potentially position yourself as a subject matter expert and use all of the real estate available to you. So depending on where you fit in that description, the next thing you really need to think about is this idea that LinkedIn's a virtual room and you networking. So we're not there to be transactional or to sell. Absolutely, we're there to get into conversations with people and generate leads that will ultimately convert people to our business services. But to be effective or and to be effective on LinkedIn, you need to think about your answer to these two questions. And I don't ask you them lightly. I hope they keep you awake uh, for just a short period before you go to sleep. 
or that they even wake you up when you're going through that to-do list of all the things you've got to navigate in your business, in your life over the next week or so. So the two questions to consider are what do you want to be known for when you're on LinkedIn? So what are you the go-to for? What's your subject matter expertise? When people think of you, what are they thinking of? How can you help them in the context of LinkedIn? So if you're a health and wellness practitioner, it might be the corporate wellness programs you run, not the local uh, sessions that you do with your community in the local area. So you've really got to segment the part of your business that's relevant to the LinkedIn community, which is a very professional community. Also lots of entrepreneurs on there, but it really is uh, also small to medium-sized businesses and lots of professionals and obviously large organisations too. And then who are you trying to influence? So with uh, your LinkedIn profile, the way it's written, and then your LinkedIn activity, uh, the people who you're connected with, who, who are they? So I talk about that as your primary and your secondary audience. So have a think about that if you linked, you've decided LinkedIn is your primary platform. Now, here's your real estate. These are the options that you need to look at in terms of the ways that you can navigate, navigate LinkedIn. So on the right-hand side there, I've listed LinkedIn profile, LinkedIn company page, et cetera. On the left-hand side is really the LinkedIn journey. So let me take you through the LinkedIn journey first. And this is really something I've developed after working with business owners and leaders across Australia for um, over 10 years. And I find that people uh, are tentative about LinkedIn because they don't understand it. And so I call that LinkedIn-itis. You think you probably need to spend time there, but you're not 100% sure where to start. So it really starts with understanding. And if this is why I'm here today. This is why I'm sharing this with you. Uh, so the next thing to think about is, well, is LinkedIn, once I've worked out, is LinkedIn for me? What do I want to be known for? Who am I trying to influence? It's really the branding element. And that's where that, uh, the LinkedIn journey and what I've got written on the right-hand side connects. So your branding opportunities on LinkedIn, and this is all free at the moment. They're free features avail available via LinkedIn. When I say free, let's be real about these platforms. So whether it's Instagram, Facebook or LinkedIn, and you're signing up for a free account, they are using you as a way to promote to and to get other organizations to run ads, to promote to you. And we've all bought things on Instagram. Um, so you know how this works. The LinkedIn platform is no different from that. And there are promoted posts in the feed. But the important thing is you can claim your real estate and leverage LinkedIn and many of the marketing features for free. So the branding really affects your LinkedIn profile. So how you're writing about yourself and using all of the features available to you with your LinkedIn profile. And then your LinkedIn company page. So your LinkedIn company page is again, free real estate. And it's how you can use it simply as a directory or you can develop a content plan just like you would from a business Facebook page, a business page. And you would need to have a strategy to do that. So in my LinkedIn marketing mentoring program, which I run twice a year, that's something we cover in a lot more detail. Now you can invest in premium membership and LinkedIn, you know, I talked to you about how do people describe LinkedIn? They're like, a writ. some people say, oh, LinkedIn's a really pushy salesperson. That's always trying to get me to invest in LinkedIn premium. Yes, the platform is owned by Microsoft. It's a for-profit platform and it wants your money. So I always think of LinkedIn as a pesky friend that I don't invite it into my inbox. I turn off all my communication settings, but gee, it's a really helpful way for me to raise my profile and engage with other community members. So I know how to switch off all the annoying settings so that I am in control of my LinkedIn experience. And it's a really good experience in the context of staying informed, remaining meaningfully connected to my community and raising my profile as a subject matter expert with my LinkedIn specialty. So you can consider premium membership. There are conditions where you might do that. It's a monthly membership. It ranges from about $40 right through to over $100. Uh, if you're interested in LinkedIn learning, don't get premium membership just for that. You can get it through most libraries. If you want to know how to do that, contact me and I'll let you know. Um, and then there's the organic versus paid option on LinkedIn. So you can, uh, and this is with the company page feature, and there's many, many LinkedIn marketing features. So just to name a few events, polls, LinkedIn Live, which you can apply for. So they're all the sort of, that's the architecture that I've just been through. And once we've moved on from branding our profile and our company page, 
The next thing we would look at is networking. So how are we engaging meaningfully with our primary audience and also our secondary audience? And they're the really the people we're trying to influence and then also the people who will refer us actively. Uh, we look at daily rituals. That's something else that's important in your LinkedIn journey. So it's Gretchen Rubin who said it's what you do every day that matters more than what, what you do once in a while. And thought leadership. You will have seen a lot of people within your competitive set, uh, friends, colleagues, people you admire and follow being really active on LinkedIn. It's a great way for you to establish your thought leadership. And there's a way for you to do that via your profile. And there's features such as the LinkedIn profile article feature, which hopefully endures company page. Um, you can also publish company page articles. There's lots of ways for you to establish your thought leadership. So here's some tips. I do want you to accept invitations to connect from people that you don't know. And I've got the little asterisk there, right? Because it's contentious. Don't uh, be snobby about who you accept invitations to connect from. Be open. It's an opportunity for you to have conversations with people. Absolutely, there's some snake oil salesy tactics on LinkedIn. However, if your profile's written well, you will start to attract a better quality invitation to connect. Be curious, be open and have a follow-up ritual uh, once you have a connection criteria. So do be discerning in who you accept invitations from connect, who you accept invitations to connect from. You might not know them, but maybe they have to uh, be based in a country that you do business with or be in an industry that you're interested in or just have an interesting profile and you think you'd like to have a conversation with them. It's not Tinder though. Don't get confused. Uh, and do be conversational in messaging. So what a lot of people don't realise is LinkedIn has this great messaging feature from your phone. You can leave audio messages. You can actually have Zoom chats. Don't necessarily recommend that feature. But on the messaging feature, it's private. You can share information privately with people. You can introduce people via LinkedIn messaging. So my suggestion is if you're yet to leverage the messaging feature. Uh, it's on the LinkedIn platform where it's different from Facebook. Facebook Messenger sort of seems to take you off the platform. It's on the LinkedIn platform and it's a way for you to stay meaningfully connected with people, check in with them. So be conversational in messaging. Don't be transactional and salesy. It's probably more formal than a text message, less formal than an email. And do build relationships. Don't be transactional. So in a world where we're at times feeling disconnected, it depends where you are in the world and, and how the pandemic has affected you, that there, um, there are, it's really important that you use LinkedIn as a tool to build relationships and to check in with people and to use the messaging feature. So yes, it is a tool for business. Yes, there is a way to leverage it. My LinkedIn marketing mentoring program covers that off in great detail in the networking, sales, marketing and content rituals. However, our focus is always on adding value and being a positive uh, contributor to your community as it is on any platform. So I've mentioned a lot of LinkedIn features here. If you'd like to know more about how to use LinkedIn for your business, you should really tune in to my five-minute LinkedIn Marketer podcast when there's a new feature. Generally, each week, every Tuesday or so, I drop a new episode, talk about a new feature. My focus is on business and how to use this feature. Um, I'm an independent LinkedIn trainer, so I'm not always an advocate of the new features. I'll tell you what to watch out for. They're what I call, it's a quickie podcast, so the episodes are five minutes, so you can't necessarily take me on a walk per episode, but you could listen to quite a few episodes depending on how long you go for a walk. And for those of you that tuned in for the whole time, I also have these downloads for you. So I suggest you probably start with the LinkedIn profile checklist. So that takes you through the key features of your LinkedIn profile. I think you need to consider as a mum in business and how to showcase that for all of the reasons that we've talked about today. If I've piqued your interest with the company page feature there's eight steps to grow your LinkedIn company page followers so these are all free downloads it does get you onto my email list and I will send you monthly emails to let you know what's happening in the world of LinkedIn and how you can take advantage of that as a business owner and then for any of you who are maybe still in that sort of side hustle I've got a, a main um 
job, Karen, but I've got this side hustle and I'm thinking of making my way across to LinkedIn or you're thinking about making a change, you can also access our career management action plan because in business, that's how I started. So Think Bespoke has been in business for over 11 years now. I originally started my business when I had really young children. My mother was diagnosed with dementia and I wasn't sure how I was going to navigate all the things because it was tricky. And so I really, that's when I established my business and really helped people in the early days in the career space. So we do still offer those services. However, my main focus and why I'm here today talking to you is about how you can, as a mum in business, leverage LinkedIn for your professional goals. So thank you so much for tuning in. If we are not connected on LinkedIn, please do reach out and send me an invitation to connect. Karen Hollenbach and let me know that you've listened today and if you've got any LinkedIn questions please ask.